Good evening, guys. Uh, I'm here again from IDN Investor Doctor Academy to share with you again. Okay, today will be our part two of the FKRI futures. Okay, so if you still remember the FKRI futures, the KLCM market part one that I shared last week. So, uh, thanks for the wedding. Today will be our part two. Alright, so if you want a refresh uh, on or revision, or if you miss the past one. Um, you can always um, refer to our links, the, the, the part one link, okay, to rewatch that or, or if you miss that, just go through that. Okay, so to, today we will move to part two. So, first of all, um, today I will gonna summarize what we discussed in part one and then we will introduce uh, what is the FKI, what is the futures, alright, and then how these futures can help our trading our investment all right and then we will move into fundamental analysis of the Malaysian market so last week because last last week we more focus on the technical analysis so this week we're gonna move to fund fundamental analysis since not all the people I think uh, got the knowledge about the technical analysis so today I will share more on fundamental an analysis and the special one I think you may not heard or you may not get this kind of info outside of market okay it's about this price seasonality price seasonality we will, dis we will, we will discuss that uh, is it Malaysia move in a pattern if, is it Malaysia move in a certain pattern so because we know that if we know something that is move in a cer cer certain pattern we can trade better okay because we can know uh, how likely the market will go next week next month something like that okay so Today we're gonna justify whether the Malaysian market move in a pattern. Okay, and, and then the last we will move to some technical analysis. Okay, we will review the chart how Malaysia moved last week. Okay, so we start with the part one summary. So let me summarize for you what we discussed, what the important points that we discussed in part one. So the first point. We must, we must make use of technical analysis so it's show that how important that technical analysis can help us to track okay especially to spot those important reversal or breakup signal before the news come out so for the part one we can know that the news saying that the major market drop because of all what is too late it's after the market or the day after okay so for the technical chart we can know the signal is start to form okay the market is weakening weeks or months or days ago all right so this is very helpful so if you do not know anything about technical analysis please google search it or follow our channel to know more about how to analyze a basic chart lah. not not no need to worry at once one but at least we need to know those important reversal or breakout signal so the point two technical signals are more stronger accurate in longer time frame like uh, we share in part one the head and shoulder pattern is formed in daily chart. This mean, meaning that <clears throat> this head and shoulder pattern, once it's formed and break down, all right, the accuracy, the chance that it can drop more is higher than we spot the signal in, let's say, our chart, 15 minute or five minute, all right, and then it, it, that it will be more stronger. It will be more stronger. Will 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 drop stronger or faster, all right. So. This meaning that when we find a reversal or breakout pattern in daily chart, we are gonna watch on it because the 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 things can be very really true, all right. And then you have to know what type of trader you are to select what time frame that suits you, all right. Like for me, I sh like I shared in part one, I using daily chart, I using hourly chart, and I using the the one minute or five minute chart. Alright, but that is for me. So you have to know which type of trader you are and select what is the best for you. Alright, so first of all, you have to know what type of trader you are. Whether you are the day trader or you are a scalper, you in out like a second one, or you may be a position trader, like hold a position over some periods for the longer term. Alright, because different of trade tra trader require different of time frame. Like you, if you are a position trader, you no need to look it at a really low time frame because you you trade on longer trend. Okay, that's what I mean. All right. 
So if you got any things that you don't know that uh, please feel free to comment under this YouTube video or in our Facebook post. Okay, so the point three. So that like what I share in part one, filter down the chart from higher time frame to lower to identify major and minor trend. Okay, for me, my major trend will be on daily chart. So I will go through the daily chart to find what is the major trend, up or down. And then I go to hourly chart to see whether the trend is up or down. Okay, let's say when the major trend and minor trend move in the same way, when the major trend show me is up, minor trend show me is up. All right, like the daily and hourly chart show me the trend is up, then my triggering signal, my trading plan will be more on the long signal, will be more on the buy side because I, I am a trend follower. I trend follower. All right, so I follow the trend one. So this is what different about the triggering chart. Triggering chart is not that the chart that you use to identify the trend. Okay, triggering chart is the one that you use to identify your entry and exit. The, your, your, your actual trading plan chart. Okay. So my triggering chart will be on 5 minutes and 1 minute. So I will find the, my entry and stop loss and the take profit point in this time frame. So what is yours? So find out now. Alright, find out after you you watch this video, you go through again. Okay, what will be your triggering chart? What will be your analysis chart? Okay, you have to differentiate it. Okay, because it's different. It's different. Okay, the time frame you use to analyze the trend doesn't mean you have to use that time frame for your triggering, for your trading plan. Alright, it's different. So for me, I will analyze if the major trend and minor trend is buy side and then I will find a buy signal in triggering chart but let's say the daily chart is short up but the hourly chart is short down okay, I may approach different strategy so meaning that the, the let's say I go for buy, buy set up I maybe have a uh, lower winning ratio in if I trade intraday something like that because the major trend is more longer Alright, so let's say if you trade on my trade on minor trend, you have to put more weight, put more more prioritize your minor trend. Okay, that's what I mean. So the point four, always cut out with a trading plan. Okay, like people say, if you <coughs> uh, if you don't have a uh, let's say uh, uh, how how they how they say oh uh, uh, yeah yeah yeah. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Uh, because I can't think of this sentence right now. Okay? I just suddenly put out from, from my mind. Alright. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Alright, so that's what how important you have a trading plan of your own. Okay. Don't trade blindly. Don't trade blindly and always keep record. Always keep record like I said in part one. Always keep your record to revise your trading plan. Alright. And then make use of different stop strategy to defend your capital. Okay, stop loss is very important. If you don't know how to cut loss, you should die on I tell you. Because uh in future we will show more how stop loss is so important in our trading plan. Alright. So we have to use different stock like I share in part one. We use can we can use a fixed stock, like how many loss we can tolerate. All right, or we can use a support and resistance stop, which we call technical stop, or we can use a trade stop. Okay, trade stop is mean um, the stop will go adjust as long as we got more profit. Okay, so this stop loss can be become stop profit. All right. So the last quick, the, the the last thing that we keep mentioning in part one, how important is futures in bearish market? Okay, so how do you say? Can you realize how important the futures in bearish market? So let's find out. So I got I got once mentioned in part one. So but I'm gonna re-ask this question again. Do you invest in major stocks, ETF, or unit trust? Okay, if you do or if you don't, do you have any solution when the market is going bad? Okay, when the market is good, then it's good because the, the share price, the unit trust price all going up. Alright, so it is good. Okay, so we know what we're doing. But how about when the mar mar when the market is bad? Do you have any plan B? 
Okay, do you have any solution that you're gonna protect your portfolio or that you gonna to make money during the market is down? Alright, so the future is uh, one of your options. One of your op options, but I, con I consider the best option to hedge against your Malaysia portfolio, especially using FKRI to hedge against your portfolio. But you have, you have to know what the share you still own in your portfolio because it may be different. May be different. So we will look into it more later all right so we move in this into this asset class diversification vs the risk diversification all right so i gonna must ask one question who make money in market who who actually make money in market i think everyone mostly all the person giving me the same answer which is the bangles the big shark the big money fund manager for the fund those big fun big fun big money always beat the market always make profit for the market all right we retail oh always always lose something like that all right so that's the point uh if you want to change this con condition we have to think like fund manager we have to think like those big money okay so we have to know what the big money is doing right now so this is the like say the fund management all right, the portfolio that the fund manager use in previous in, in previous time okay in previous time so we can see here here so this is how you define risk diversification or asset class diversification okay so we normally we we know that the big funds manager they got a lot of money so they won't put all the money in one basket but how they diversify the risk so here I'm gonna show you what is the actual definition of risk diversification. So here we can we can we can see it is actually put all the money into different asset, but not actually 100% diversify the risk because back to this key question: What if market drop? Okay, so this is what we call asset class diversification, not risk diversification. Okay, this is the modern one. This is more more than one. I think I think this one this pie chart I extract I extract from the HSBC Unit Trust Fund. All right, so we can see the green area here. You got a new component called called managed futures. So meaning that the fund manager actually put some fund doing hedging. So this is what we call risk diversification because when the market is going down, it got something to hedge against the whole portfolio. All right, so at here. Some people may ask, hey, I'm, I'm invested in low risk um, unit, unit trust, so the, this future is not related to me because the future is considered a high risk product. But I invest in, like, let's say, those fixed income fund, those very low risk unit, unit trust. All right? But I'm going to show you, I'm going to blow your mind. So we look at here, the left side one. The left side one is actually fixed income fund, the very low risk unit trust because we can see here the major component of this portfolio is bond alright so we can see that the fund manager invest in bond but yet is still hedging uh, using the futures because we actually got US bond future okay we actually got US bond future so this is how um, manage the futures can help to offset our investment portfolio and it's really deep work so this is how fund manager doing the fund manager now is hedging their portfolio using the futures so how about you how about you do you do something to prevent when the market drop do you have plan b when the market drop all right so if you have a lot of funds that's fine but fund manager got a lot of more funds but what what they are still doing the futures all right so we can see here you don't need to put the the fund manager doesn't put do not put as a lot of funds into the futures. This is six percent or five percent from the overall portfolio. Why? Because the futures using leverage. Okay, leverage in um in simple is it means you use a very little of capital to hedge on to invest on uh, something bigger. Okay, like 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 housing loan. Like you buy a house, you buy a housing loan. Okay. You buy a house that worth of uh, let's say 500k, make sure you can get all right. But you, 
the how much deposit you have, you 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 just need to pay to buy the house, meaning that you don't need to cut out of five hundred k to buy a house. You can apply house housing loan. This housing loan will be leveraged, something like that. So today sharing, we will move away the leverage part. Okay, so um in in future i think i will share more i will make a video to share more about this uh leverage all right so just now we know how um important of futures to the malaysia market so now we look into the malaysia market so malaysia market everyone i i think if you know that if you notice it from news from video from newspapers you can always knowing that klci is a main component right so what is klci so for you those for those that you still don't know what is klci i'm gonna brief through all right klci is actually the benchmark of the malaysia equity market so mean, 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 mean that when the when the people want to look into the malaysia market want to know about whether the malaysia market is good or bad they always look into this klci <coughs> to justify the market performance all right so this KLCI is consisted of the 30 top market cap companies in Malaysia all right but the thing is that the market cap is always changing so meaning that these 30 stocks can be always changed all right so this uh, no normally Malaysia will review this top 30 components every twice a year every June and, de and December so may, maybe during June and December we're gonna put attention, all right? There may be some stock kick out from the portfolio and some stock add in into the KLCI, all right? But how it will affect the stock price, uh, all right? Because we look at the last point. When the foreign fund or our big money, uh, when they want to invest in Malaysia stock market, they will always first look into this KLCI because this is a benchmark this is the top stocks this is the best stocks in Malaysia okay so this is a, KL, this, this is a benchmark so the foreign fund or the big fund will always look into it first and buy into it first so meaning that if there is some stock being kicked up from the KLCI the big fund may selling it and then change into buying the, the, those stocks that will add into the KLCI so that is how this thing will affect the stock price. So every June and every December, we're going to look into it, whether there is some stock changes. So like this stock, uh, like this, this news. So um, this is the review during the June. So we can know in that uh, there is some stock ending and then there is some stock being kicked out. So the being kicked out one is YTL, MBAN and Straw. So we can may see that the this three stock price been going down okay after the news or before this news come come out all right and then we see some stock price like hata like airport may be going up okay during this period too because there is may be some fun switching okay fun switching so KLCI, I we know that we got 30 stocks okay so this slide will show you why is the top why is the top 10 in this 30 stocks why is the top 10 in klci so here is the top 10. first point <coughs> the top 10 stocks consisted of um, more than 60 percent of the whole klci meaning that um these 10 stocks price performance will more influence will go more influence and more affect the of the KLCI in, in index so we're gonna put more attention at these 10 stocks so meaning that if the, this 10 stock going down then more likely the KLCI will going down because because it is cons consistent more than half of the KLCI so what is the top one top one is actually private bank for now all right maybe changing but now it's private bank all right so meaning that the, the, the stock price of private bank may affect more in KLCI so we look in this 10 stock anything bad happen or good happen in this 10, 10 stock we will knowing that how it may affect the KLCI so it, it, it will help us to make our decision 
trading or investment de decision. All right. So in these 30 stocks, I highlighted in red, the biggest component in this KLCI is banks. All right, consisted of seven stocks or more than one third, which is 30%. So, when we look at the KLCI, when we look at the major stock market, we want to know they're good or not. The banks will be the main role, the, 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 the main things we, we're going to look into. So, if, if the banking sector in Malaysia is doing well, then, then so we can know, know knowing that the KLCI more, high, more likely will going up. <coughs> so, the last two slides, <coughs> we will know that when the financial report coming out all right which stock we will first look into to 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 justify that the KLCI is good or not all right so this slide uh like say mentioned just just now why we choose the fki like we share in part one all right but fki for me i think is the best hedging tool against the KLCI, uh, the, the 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 nearest because the underlying asset is KLCI. And then whether you are hedgers, whether you are speculators or traders, the FKI is always suit for you. All right. If you hold shares, you can use FKI to do the hedging. If you traders, you can always speculate or trade on the futures product. All right. And then it's very cheap. Uh, like if you don't have money to buy the KLCI 30 stocks, but like let's say the the public bank you buy one lot is already more than 10k, but the future is only 3.5k to 4k it's very cheap it's very cheap because you're using the leverage all right so uh, to know more about this fki you can always refer to this website at busan malaysia all right to know more about the spec of the care of the fki so i'm gonna skip this slide so you can always refer to the busan malaysia website so here we move to fundamental analysis so first of all of course we have to know the fundamentals of the index stock but what are the index stock we we need to put more uh, uh, attention like we mentioned just now the top 10 and the banking stock all right so this is the website my favorite Malaysia stock biz all right i put a link here so you can go to this website and then add your KLCI 30 stock into your watch list so when the financial report come out you can always look into it so whether good or not it will definitely affect the KLCI all right so after the index stock is more on microeconomy all right because it's in their stock okay so and then we move into the overall Malaysia stock market all right so in order to know because of the people are always asking whether the Malaysian market now is undervalued or overvalued so this is a table that we can look into you can always refer to this website to get the new the the, the latest data all right so I break it in red is will be our Malaysian market so this is here the PE all right the PE will tell us whether the Malaysian market now is cheap or expensive all right so we look at the PE, the forecast PE for 2019, 2018, and the uh, last year PE. So it's around 16 times. If we compare with Thailand, if India, in, in, Indonesia, these Southeast Asian countries, we can know that um, the PE is more or less the same. It's in range. So it, uh, compared with peer countries, it's, it's not very expensive or cheap, right? It's, it's considered neutral. Right. but if you compare with MSCI emerging market because the Malaysia is still emerging market all right so the piece will be slightly higher because the average I think is 11 to 12 all right so we can knowing that the Malaysia if compared to MSCI emerging market index the P is slightly as expensive this is why the CIMB said is KLCI target price for this year is only 1684 okay part of the reason is because of this pe and part of the reason is because of the uncertainty so we have to know the fundamental of economy not only the stock all right we have to know the fundamental of malaysia economy besides that KLCI top 30 stocks huh? so 
for the fundamental of major economy i provide this link this one is my favorite trading economies.com of course you can look into the investing.com too the investing.com got the data too but i particularly like this all right so they got two page this one is his historical data all right including the gdp the employment the best of trade something like export and import to know how well the Malaysian market is doing the Malaysian economy is doing and then this is the calendar calendar will show you what the indicator in Malaysia in future that we need to look into all right something like that huh? I click out the website <coughs> yeah it's something like that so here countries you have to filter it you have to select the Malaysia and then the time zone uh, adjust to plus X which is the Malaysia time zone so from here we can see uh what is the upcoming economic indicator that we need to look into and then there will be the forecast whether the actual result will be lower or higher than the forecast we need to compare and then historical data all right so for the past history we can always uh click at this indicators countries and select malaysia so we're back into this slide <coughs> all right so next we move into this uh what we call that this called correlation okay correlation uh, um because i am always heard people saying that when the u.s market going down the fqr the malaysian market will follow too okay whether it's true or not because this is just a statement i'm really data guy because i need the data i need the figures to convince me whether it's true or not so i go find out the data and then compare this and then i'm going to share with you whether the people saying whether this statement is true or not all right so the blue line chart <coughs> is dow john all right the red line is our malaysia KLCI or fki all right and then the downside one this green green area is what we call correlation okay this is zero okay below this zero we call that negative correlation meaning that the direction of these two market will going opposite meaning that when the u.s market going up the malaysia market will going down right and then the above this zero is positive correlation meaning that the both market will move in same direction when the u.s going up the malaysia will going up something like that all right so we can see here Point one, most of the times, these two market will be in positive zone. Most of the times, I think can say near ninety percent of higher than that. <coughs> All right. Point two, this thing show us the core relationship will not always the same because we can see here they got some period that the Malaysia and US is in negative core relationship meaning that the direction is going opposite one all right so this, this is a point two the correlationship will be different in different market condition okay will not always be the same will not always be the same so we can we can't blindly saying that or oh, the us go down the measure will go down every day like that we can't say that okay and then the point three when we look at the positive correlationship zone okay we find that the correlationship actually more than 50 percent this is 0.5 which is showing that the 50 percent and then near 100 percent meaning that the fkri <coughs> the malaysian market and the u.s market got more than 50 percent or near 100 percent the correlationship meaning that these two market <coughs> is very high correlated positively correlated there is um uh let's say average is 70 percent so meaning that 70 percent of the time that the malaysia and us will move in the same way something like that so this is how we interpret this data so we move on to compare the next pair <coughs> let me drink some water because my my my, my throat is not feeling well today so i apologize for that <coughs> all right 
So the next pair we compare the Malaysia market with the Malaysia currency, right? So from this we need, we want to know that whether the weak Malaysia currency is good or bad for Malaysia economy, especially the stock market, because we always heard that the people saying that when the Malaysia is going weak, the export can be more, right? But if we look at the another angle, that we actually got that in USD, USD de denominated debt, okay, meaning that if the major you get gold weight, we have to pay more than that, alright, so the result is, we look at, at this green area, okay, most of, of the time is in negative zone, and then point two, the re relationship is higher than 0 0.5 most of the times, Alright, and then uh, near to 100%. Alright, so what negative co relationship tell us? Alright, meaning that if the Malaysian ringgit goes strong, which, which is the USD gold weight, alright, if the Malaysian ringgit goes strong, it's actually pos positive to our stock market. Alright, if the Malaysian ringgit gold weight, it actually hit back for our Malaysia stock market. Because part of the reason that the major ringgit going weak is because the stock market is selling by the foreign fund, all right. So that why they 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 that is why the major ringgit go weak, all right. So the conclusion is that uh, okay, FKRI, which major market and the USD MIR pair, the major ringgit, all right, is negative correlated. The strong major ringgit will help stock market. Okay, that's the conclusion. And then we move to <coughs> FKI and crude oil. Okay, crude oil is one of our major export. So we have to know that whether the crude oil price will help, actually help our stock market, true or not. Alright, so from this data, we can tell that there is not so <coughs> correlated if you compare with the pair just now. Okay, it's, it's not so correlated because the crude oil got a big team this few years, which is the OPEC production cut. So make the 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 market go different way. But we can see still 60% to 70% the market will be in what? Positive correlationship zone and more than 0 0.5. But the chance is near to 100% is quite low. Lah. So we can say that the Malaysian market and crude oil is positive correlated, but not so significantly. All right, not so significantly. Meaning that if the oil price go up, it's actually help our stock market. All right, that's the conclusion for this pair. And then we move to the next export. So FCPO, which is the crude palm oil, the crude palm oil global survey, is also the main of our export. All right, so we can see here the correlation sheet. It's around 50-50, so 50 of the chance is in negative zone and 50 of the chance is in positive zone. So we can, the conclusion is the palm oil price, whether good or bad, is not correlated, is not significantly correlated to FKI. So when we want to know how the Malaysian stock market doing, we um, can less focus on this palm oil price because it's not correlated. Alright, so after the coin ship, we move to this foreign fund flow. Okay, for the latest data, you can always refer to this link I provide here. Alright, so this is the data is up to date uh, at, on the 8th October, right? which is the two weeks ago. Alright, the last week one haven't come out yet. Alright, so here we can see that the Malaysia compared with other Southeast Asian countries how the foreign fund doing since January of 2018. <clears throat> so the point one is actually still selling. So meaning that the upside for the Southeast Asia country is still low because the foreign fund we can see that it's still selling. Okay, so the upside is likely limited for this four stock market. But the point two, the good news is the Malaysia actually steadier and firmer if compared with other countries because it's not dropped so much the foreign fund selling for the Malaysia is not that much all right it's beginning the second 
if if compared with Philippines, all right, it sell more than Philippines, but before the May is actually net buy, all right, and then the worst the the most worst one is Thailand, and then followed by the Indo Indonesia. So the conclusion is the Malaysia it is relatively healthier, okay, firmer and steadier if compared with other Southeast Asian country, all right, but still selling, still selling. Next will be our political factors. So we knowing that the political factors will be affect our economy and also the stock market. But the factors can be quite blur because it doesn't have a figure. It doesn't have number. Only positive or negative news, and then it doesn't tell us when because the political factors can be happen anytime. So we have to watch on news. Okay, pay more at attention on on news. The Malaysia new any news <coughs> new po political news the factors will be add in whether it's good or bad. Alright, so the latest one will be our Malaysia budget 2019, which is on November. So this is a thing we need to watch on whether it will affect our Malaysia market in short term. Okay, because in long term, it's still back to the. Global economy, global economy letter we will go watch on that. So this is an example of the political factors. Like during the May, right? Once our financial minister um announced the our our pub our public debt, all right, how serious it is. So on that day, on that few days, the Malaysian market dropped. Okay, so this is how political factors can affect our stock market. All right, why? Huh? Why? Why, 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 why like that? Because <clears throat> if today I'm the big money, I'm the foreign fund. I like something that's stable. I like to invest something that is stable. So meaning that if your political condition in your country create uncertainties, why still I take additional risk to invest in your country? I can relatively choose other country that is with more stable political con con condition. So meaning that the money like certainty, the money like stability. All right, that's the point. All right, here it will be our global economy we're talking about. So in long term, we still follow the 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 head lah, the big boss. All right, the global economy big the economy global economy big boss like U.S. like China, Europe, and Japan. So the U.S. China trade war is still ongoing. And then recently, the U.S. shut for the because of this interest rate having dragged down the all the economy in the world, all right? So in future, we will share more. We will I, I I will create the new video, all right? We will share more about how this U.S. interest rate can create a domino effect. How why the U.S. market can affect this kind of thing can affect the whole world stock market, all right? So. The point now is we have to look at in in the news whether there is something wrong in the global economy, all right? But because the global economy is very hard to understand if you want to go very deep into it, so from beginning we just start with reading the news, whether it's positive or negative for the rest of of, of the world, all right? Now this part will be our final part, all right? The price generality we're talking about. <coughs> So that's the three things I always heard about. The first one is window dressing. Window dressing, we suggested that every December the Malaysian market will going up, whether it's true or not. Because like I said, just, just now I'm a data guy. So I need a data to prove whether the statement is true or wrong. All right. So the second one I always heard about is January effect. January effect is suggested that after the December window dressing, the market will going down. Right, because the fund is already pushed up the market and then the in January they want to sell out. So of course we have to see whether it's true or not. And then the third one will be the sell in May and go whether we always heard about from the news from the we video or something. Alright. So today we're gonna see <coughs> whether this this cut off these things are true. Alright, but one point I have to highlight is that 
the market sentiment is always changed uh, okay like this the 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 last point okay market sentiment is changed all the time so seasonality will may not always be the same meaning that the video dressing happened this year may not be happen next year so this is for reference not your entire guideline all right so just for your reference all right so i'm gonna show you how to read this table all right from top to bottom is year okay for from 2008 to 2017 and then from the left to right is month from january to december okay so the numbers be the, the numbers be below okay will show how the the monthly performance in these 10 years okay so being that we look at the first column from 2008 to 2017 there is four january in this 10 years is going up okay so can you guys understand if understand that i'm moving on if you do not please leave a comment down there all right so for the pay ta table here we can see that january will relatively the weak month all right because it's only 40 percent if you're going up all right the december is a strong month is 90 percent the month will going up so the conclusion of this table is the window dressing is true because 90 percent it will happen and then the january effect is true 40 percent it will happen and ah uh, no 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 it's 60 percent it, it will happen because it's only 40 percent the month will go up all right but the sell in may and go away we can see here is quite neutral eh? quite neutral because it's 50 percent 70 percent go up some more all right so this one thing okay this because this compare month by, by by the month okay not the previous month all right so this table i'm using a different approach all right i i i made a new seasonality okay which will show us <coughs> compare month by month meaning that i compare february to january how is the change all right so we'll come up with this light chart so i gonna show you uh, this chart is very sim simple to read actually all right the left hand side we can see there is a zero percent all right so the uh, above that will be pos positive change and then below that will be the negative change okay and then the from the left to right is the month all right from january to de to december and then this line is how the performance is going okay i compare two chart 20 years average and 10 years average okay so here will show us january <coughs> for the last 10 years yes it's going down but for the last 20 years it's actually going up so the january effect we can see that it's only start to begin 10 years ago so they, this is what I mentioned just now. The market sentiment is changed. The seasonality will be changed according to the market sentiment at that moment. All right. So you can see here the general effect always take effect uh, for the for the last ten years, and then the window dressing is always true. All right. December always come out whether it's for 20, 20 years or ten years average. All right. And then the second man go away is it true also. After April, the market will start to go down and then rebound af after June. Uh. So we'll, we'll rebound on July, uh, let's say. All right. And then <coughs> after July, we're going down again and then rebound and then going down again in November or somewhere in October and then go up at the year end. All right. So the only difference between the 20 years average and the 10 years average I already draw a line here is before the march all right the last 10 years before the march is drop one but the, for the last 20 years average the before march is actually going up so uh, there is some idea put out from my mind what if i apply this chart onto the what the actual market chart whether it will move at the same way whether the market will move according to this average all right let's find out all right this is 2017 
year 2017 chart. Okay, so this this is the the candlestick chart will be the actual that happened uh, during the 2017, and then uh, this green line will be 10 years average. So I <coughs> I combine it together. So can you see the similarity? It's actually roughly follow the money average, the 10 years money average. Okay. We can see here. Um, it, 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 actually, I type wrong. Uh, this should be the twenty, the twenty years because the before the March is going up one. Uh, so this should be, should be the 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 twenty years average. All right. So we can see here for January the market start to go up, and then the market drop down later uh, The the market the market actually drop down at June. All right, but the average is dropped down from the April. But the same thing is, after the June, then, then the market starts going down and then rebound on this, on December. Okay, so we can see uh, the monthly average and the actual market per performance is near, nearly the same. This is how it can help our trading. Meaning that these two lines, these two lines actually can help us to make our trading decision. Alright, so we can roughly know what is the next month will perform like. Alright, so this is how 2016 doing. Okay, 2016 more chanted. Uh, okay, more chanted because we can see that the market is actually fall down start from April. Okay, so it move move in the same way. You, you, you can see that, right? Okay, this is 2015. Also, move roughly the same way okay going up from the january and then going down again and then the de december up for the window dressing so it's nearly moved in the same way so we apply this line chart whether the 20 years average or 10 years average into 2018 okay so sorry the 2018 chart only updated till july Okay, but you, you, you can see from, from the chatting software why it go right now. Lah. Okay. So for the 2018, <coughs> generally it starts to going up and then after somewhere in April it's going down. Alright. And then July also going going down and then rebound. And then during last time during Ju July I got mentioned with our students, okay, with our groups, that the stock market likely to go down in October because it follow the monthly average. So the market is actually go down. So if this year is um, so if 2018 is still follow the monthly average, so we can expect that the market will going out again during somewhere in November to December for the window dressing. Okay, so we can watch on that uh, watch on buy signal. And they rebound signal during November or December. Okay. So before we add, let me let us to take a look at the chart. Lah. Da da da. Okay. This is a daily chart. So I gonna brief very very short one because I know not all the people go got knowledge about the technical analysis. Alright. So we brief two very simple one. What happened at last week? So we can see this is how the market doing for now. The market is still in correction. Why I say so? Because the market still in lower high and lower low. Right? I gonna mention uh, again. This website is very helpful. You can always look into this website for charting tradingview.com. We register a new account, a free account. All right. And then uh, we can see here. It's still below the middle line of Bollinger Band, so it's still weak. Alright, and then the volume we can see here, the buying volume is actually weak, so this is just a technical rebound. So we can see here, after the technical re rebound, the price going down because the volume is weak. The volume after this, this sharp sell, alright, is weak and cannot outperform this, this red bar. Alright, because we, we have to need a bar something like this. Okay, to show a strong re rebound power because we can we can see the re re return of buying power, but for now it's not yet. Okay, the buying is still weakening. We can see here. Okay, the buying is buying volume is still weakening. MACD is still closing down. 
ISI is also still closing down. So meaning that for now the Malaysian market uh, the, for the chart from chart wise uh, is still more to bearish. So we can see here the new week tomorrow um, can uh, it's, it's still more to bear bearish. Uh. So the first rebound signal we can see will be at here. Yeah, here. So the first re rebound signal we require a higher high and higher low. Okay, higher uh, now got higher low. Okay, now got higher low, but not yet higher high. So a close a uh, above one seven four nine point five will trigger a short term rebound signal and and then may test the mi middle of the band which is around one seven six five. All right. So this is a brief um and analyze analysis of the FKI daily chart okay the conclusion is more to bearish so the next week we can see the selling pressure is still in in there but we pay attention and it comes up above this level will trigger a short term technical rebound all right so this will be the end of our training to today so once again thank you for your guys for lending your time for to me all right to 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 to, to hear my sharing and also join our channels that I put the link below this video. All right, join our channel to receive the news and also the free daily commentaries. All right, the training plan we provide is free. So if you're new to future and you do not know how to trade, you can follow us. I'll follow our plan. All right, it's record proven so far. And then if you already start in trading futures, I really hope our news and our commentaries can help you in your trading. So. This will be all. See you guys. Uh, see you if I have a new sharing next time. We will post again. So until then, see you.